A 0.3 kilogram metal bar initially at 1200 Kelvin, quite a hot temperature, is removed from an oven and quenched by immersing it in a closed tank containing 9 kilograms of water, initially at 300 Kelvin. Each substance can be modeled as incompressible. An appropriate constant like the heat capacity of the water can be thought of specific heat capacities 4.2 kilojoule per kilogram kelvin and then for that for the metal is 0.42 the other one is 4.2 the other one is 0.42 heat transfer from the tank contents can be neglected we are asked to determine the, fine, the equilibrium temp of the metal bar and the water and the amount of entropy produced okay in kilojoule per kelvin so let me draw first a sketch of the process well, we can think of that we have a tank, essentially, and the tank is more or less maybe an insulating tank or something. And we have fluid in it. Okay, and of course, the fluid here is actually water. And it's filled with water. And then you drop here your uh, um, metal bar. Okay. Drop that metal bar here, essentially, if that will be the bar. And it's quite hot, higher, at high temp, okay? Now, when we know that this bar will release heat to the water, okay, the water will absorb that, and as a whole, this is insulated, meaning as a whole, you can think of that nothing, no heat enters and leaves your what, your system, okay, as a whole. This is what we call an insulated or isolated system. No mass enter, no mass leaves, and no heat also enters and leaves your system. Now, uh, that that's the idea, and First, let's answer the question. So, what is the calculating for the final temp? Let's calculate the final temperature or the equilibrium temp. Now, the initially the what will happen is that your what your your rod, okay, uh, your metal bar, okay. Initially, let's talk about look about the metal bar first. The metal bar will be from 1200 Kelvin. It will what? Cool down to what temp? That's what we're looking for. T final. Or the equilibrium temp. How about your your water? Your water from 300 Kelvin, it will heat up because it will absorb part of the heat. To what temperature? Well, there will be an equilibrium. It will be Tf also. Okay? And as you can see, this what this releases heat, this absorbs heat, and to compute for the amount of heat being released and absorbed, you can simply calculate. Okay, since here, Q like metal plus Q Q what Q Q water will just be equal to zero, right? Why? Because the total heat, there is no heat entering and leaving this whole system. This is an insulated system. No heat leaks through and leaks in. So therefore, the total heat exchange will just be zero. Okay. Now, talk about Q. This is an incompressible system and this is a constant pressure process exposed to the atmosphere. Essentially, atmospheric, a closed system. We can just simply have Q to be equal to MC delta T. MCP delta T. That's then Q. Okay. Where M stands for the mass. CP, the... That's the, in this case for water, it's 4.2, and then the other one is 0.42. So let's have that. Q, the mass of the metal, that's what? 0.3, that's kilograms. Cp, or Cp of the metal? The Cp of the metal is 0.42 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Delta T, well it starts, the temperature final of the metal is Tf, minus temperature initial is 1200, okay? How about for that of the water? Well, the water is 9 kilogram times what? The CP of water is 4.2. Okay, and then a delta T of water, T final is TF minus T initial, which is in this case, initial temp of water is 300. Okay, that's 300 Kelvin. So that's equal then to zero, right? Yeah, right. And therefore, will then be able to co compute. Let the calculator do the job for us and therefore, okay, with that equation, with this one, we can solve for Tf. Tf is equal to 
Okay, in this case, it gives us TF of 302.99 Kelvin, or approximately 303, right? Okay, or I think it's proper, more proper to write this as 303 Kelvin. Okay, so the final temperature after the quenching process. So as you can see, the water will only rise its temperature a little bit from 300 to 303. As you can see, there's all a lot of water, 9 kilograms, and your metal is only 0.3 kilogram and sea of water is quite big compared to that of the metal. Now, the second question is, what about the entropy? Well, entropy more or less will give, will give us an idea on how much entropy is generated. In this case, entropy generated is simply the sum of the entropy change for the for the water and that the entropy change also for the what? For the for the rod or for the metal. Okay? For the metal and that will be the delta S total or that is the change or generation of the entropy. So how do we calculate the entropy change? Well entropy delta S is simply defined as the integral of dq over t from of course in this case since this process like for example your water your water is not really kept at constant temp right you add q how much q do you add but um, you don't really add that heat to the water at constant temp because the temperature has been changing for the water from 300 to 303 same with the matter so in that case we could just what we could just um, and evaluate this integral replacing dq with since we have this q is equal to mcp delta t we could just really replace dq with what mcp dt right so if we do that we'll then be having here mcp dt over t and in this case we assume that the mass of the water is constant not, not no water evaporates cp is essentially constant also same with that of the metal and therefore we can just have that mcp integral of what what's the integral of cp over t that's of course ln of ln of t evaluated from what is evaluated from the initial temp to the final temp okay t initial to t final okay in this case if we evaluate that from t initial to t final we'll have here ln of t final over t initial that's ln the big ln Okay, so for the water, we can simply have M of the water, the mass is 9 kg, CP of the water is, so I'll have units here, 9 kg CP of the water is 4.2, okay, 4.2 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin, and we have LN of what? LN of TF. The final temp for the water, same with that with the metal bar is actually 303 Kelvin the initial temp is 300 okay and actually if we evaluate that that will lead to 9 times 4.2 times ln of 303 divide 300 that's supposed to give us an entropy the the water has gained entropy 0.376 the unit of course will be kilojoule per Kelvin right because the kilogram will cancel. Now, 0.376 meaning did the water gain entropy or get more disturbance or chaos because it's increased it does increase its temperature. How about the metal? Well, the metal is supposed to have decreased its entropy because the metal has cooled down from 1200 to 303 Kelvin. But let's calculate how much of that. So delta S plus what? Delta S of metal will just be 0.3. Okay, times for that of the metal, we'll have 0.42 yung CP or C, and we'll have LN of what? Times LN of the final temp is 303, the initial temp is 1200 Kelvin. So let's calculate also that LN of 303 divided by 1200, okay, multiplied by 0.42 times 0.3, it gives us an entropy of negative 0.42. 173 kilojoule per kilogram meaning its entropy of the metal metal bar has decreased by 0.173 while that of the water has increased by that all in all the total effect will be a net delta s or delta s total or simply 
a total generation of entropy in every process as long as it's not it's not ano, um, reversible there will always be a generation of entropy in that case 0.376 minus 0.173 the net generation of entropy is roughly on 0.2 kilojoule per kilogram meaning entropy is generated by this magnitude there's 0.2 kilojoules of entropy per kilogram uh, per kilogram or 0.2 entropy is formed wait I think I'm mistaken it's not kilojoule per kilogram right it's Kelvin so the entropy generated or form is 0.2 kilojoule per Kelvin thank you